It's showtime. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my pants. Put suckers in fear. Making the tears rain down like a monsoon. When was the first time that you truly felt in character? Like the moment you embodied your character? For me, it was there was a scene where I'm like, I'm screaming my lungs out. I'm really angry at this character and I'm like really amped up. And for me, like those emotional scenes are so much more draining than any other scenes. Cause you put like, you mentally put yourself into, mm -hmm. into the character. Yeah, and I went home and I'm like, mm -hmm. I think for me, <laughs> I had prepared so much for the action element of the movie. And that's such a huge part of Domino is that she's able to be physical in that way. And so I was so proud because I was really nervous about going into it. Like hopefully it was all paid off and they didn't hire the wrong chick. Domino, I'm lucky. Luck isn't a superpower. Zazie, that was, um, it was simple for me. I mean, it was a simple choice. Like we had chemistry reads with a really short list of actresses who were in line for Domino. And it was undeniable when she was working with Ryan that we'd found her. And a lot of it is like sort of this raw charisma that she has, that's just her. And then it is another is this sort of comedic, subtle comedic timing. God, I wish I finished college. There's two times. One is the scene that we did in Blind Owls, which was my first scene which I was surrounded by all these amazing kind of comedians and I was this serious guy in the nucleus and the, in the crosshairs of all these people. Your time's up, dumbass. Well, that's just lazy writing. That was an unnerving moment, but I found my way into it and then it started to really get fun. And then we did a scene between Ryan and I that's more of a volley toward the end of the film. That was my favorite. So the volley, the kind of Eddie Murphy, Nick Nolte volleying is what I found to be extremely pleasurable. Bring it on one night, Willie. In the third act, it was actually the first scene that we shot with Josh was in the scene with Blind Owls where all the characters are there and like, I don't want to give it away, but like this crazy thing happens and it's, it's a really comedic scene and it's very heavy and it's a repartee and then Josh's character appears and it, the tone has to go 180. And you can just see his skill of an actor of like taking this highly comedic scene and with one line switching the gravitas and allowing us to go into this really dark place that we needed for the narrative. That's his first day on set and it's a third act scene. So knowing where he was with the character and where he was going to be at that moment, I mean, it just shows the level of actor that he is. There's this kid, he's in trouble. Move or die. Pump the hate breaks, Thanos. If Cable could team up with any hero or villain from the MCU, who would they choose? Okay, well, I don't know because, you know, I mean, this has been a whole new kind of biblical world that's been open to me. I've spent enough time learning about Thanos and about Cable and then kind of got into the whole Hulk thing and Thor. And so you start to find all in the little nooks and crannies and the labyrinth that is the Marvel world. It's endless. So I don't know. All the women in one movie. That, I think, I think it would be kind of cool. Yeah, um, I would love to see Korg in Fire Fist. It'd be really cool, because Taika plays Korg, so get to work with him again. Do you reckon you'd be interested? What I find interesting about Deadpool is that it just does so well in standing alone in its own world. I'd find it more interesting if you could take Deadpool to other genres and like just have irreverent fun there, like Deadpool pirates or, you know, Deadpool period piece, like that kind of thing. And I think that that would be, that opening up Deadpool's world that way would be really fun. We're gonna form a super duper group. That's what we're gonna do. Our group will be forward thinking, gender neutral. We will be known as X-Force. If you were auditioning for X-Force, how would you promote yourself? As Josh Brolin, yes. um, sarcasm, a decent body once I've really knocked out the sugar and stuff like that, a great diet. I would bring sarcasm and a great diet. You're absolutely right. And a cup of coffee. I'd bring a cup of coffee for everybody. 48-year-old Caucasian male who has an extensive stunt background and has uh, directed a couple films and uh, did martial arts as a kid, so maybe uh, that should help. I don't think I would beat out Peter for the job. Let's just say it. Like, Peter, he's just an honest guy looking for work in a contracting economy. Any power you want to tell us about? I don't, I don't have one. Um, I, I just saw the ad. You're in. The power of patience. Mm. No, my, uh, the power of the dude who's just there for moral support. 
So he doesn't really do anything but like travels with the team. The power um, of charisma. Yeah, the power of charisma. <laughs> So the action looks spectacular. Thank you. What was your aim with the set pieces? Um, I think we really just wanted to make sure that they lived in the sort of uh, summer tent pole space and like lived up to that expectation. Um, the other thing I brought to the set pieces was um, having fun with the particular powers of this X-Force, right? Um, having a character like Domino, whose power is luck, we really got to play with um, with the expectation of what, you know, you were going to see next. I mean, there's sort of this final destination uh, on steroids power that she has, and you're going to watch it unfold in this sort of Rube Goldberg kind of way. So um, it was fun to have, f you know, fun with her powers. And even Deadpool's healing power, I think we, we tried to have m more irreverent fun with it in this one. It's great. Yeah. So if the first film was a romance, this feels more like it's about family. Um, would that be fair? Yeah, I think it's a fair assessment. Um, I think there are a lot of themes that are working in Deadpool 2. Um, yeah, the first one, obviously Deadpool 1, love story. This is a, a family film. It's, it's Deadpool on a journey to sort of discover um, what's important and learn a lesson. Um, and it's also um, it's a sort of a tale of nature versus nurture uh, at its heart, really. That's great. Yeah. So are you a comic book fan? And have you read any of these comics as research prior to filming? Um, I'm a comic book fan, but I'm not, I would not be, um, I'm not a rabid one, you know, and I didn't, and I have a, I have a really good working knowledge, but uh, again, like, I'm not a super fan. Um, but when I, I'm a, I'm a fan of the original film so much and the world that um, I dove in and did my research to make sure that these characters were true to the canon and they were being reverent to, you know, the fanboys, but also to an audience that may not know who they were. And so, um, I think it actually was a good, um, a good judge of that. I hope so. No, definitely. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Would you be interested in telling further stories within this universe? Absolutely. I was just saying um, before that I don't think there's ever going to be a time where I could be so creative. Um, it's a world that allows you to do anything. And if you look at Deadpool, the story itself, it has this like crazy, irreverent comedy. But then we have this heartfelt drama, and then we have. Um, some real tension and between the characters, uh, and then there's like wall-to-wall -wall action. Like I, I don't know what other sort of universe, even just a regular comic book movie, I'd be allowed to do this expansive of a story. So. Meet Domino. What's your shtick? I'm lucky. Luck isn't a superpower. <laughs> don't call it a comic. Yes, it is. No, it's not. This is Zossi Beats, which apart from being one of the coolest names I've ever heard in my life, is the name of the multi-talented actress who plays Vanessa in Donald Glover's Atlanta, and of course you can see her as Domino in Deadpool 2. But before becoming the newest action hero, Zossi was an aspiring actress growing up in New York, although she was originally born in Germany. As a result, she's fluent in German, a skill she was able to use in this episode of Atlanta when her character Vanessa takes Ernest to a German festival. Sprichst du Deutsch? Ja, aber nur ich. Ja, nicht. Nee, er spricht kein Deutsch. Na, no. okay, das ist unsere Geheimsprache dann. Do you understand that? No. After graduating from Skidmore College with a BA in French Language and Literature in 2013, she started appearing in a number of New York-based short films, and in 2015, she had her first feature film role as Girl Number One in the indie drama James White. She's in focus for seconds at a time, but her character served her purpose, a person our main character gets annoyed at for talking too loudly in a bar. In her next feature film, however, Applesauce, she had much more screen time as an outspoken high school student. Do you realize what you're saying? You're saying that the terrorists were justified in what they did. But it was 2016 that helped Zossi really break out and make a name for herself. In the indie sports drama Wolves, she plays Victoria, a concerned girlfriend to the main character whose stress on the basketball court begins to spill over into their relationship. And of course, she was cast as a recurring character, Vanessa, in Donald Glover's Atlanta. And in a show that blurs the line between comedy and drama, Vanessa's like an anchor, a voice of reason. Which is why it's so funny to watch an entire 
entire episode dedicated to her in which she scrambles to find fresh urine for a drug test she has to take at work. In recent years, you might have seen Zossi playing an ambitious cybersecurity expert in Geostorm, but one project that really showcased how natural and subtle she is as an actress was in a sexual harassment PSA starring and executive produced by David Schwimmer, in which he plays her boss and late one night tries something inappropriate. I'm sorry, I, ha I have a boyfriend. No, that's that's okay. I'm, I'm married. I mean, I just I was just trying to show you how much I appreciate you. You know. I do. Uh, yeah. Um... I do. I really do. It's difficult to watch, and we can feel how uncomfortable and unsafe Zossie's character feels. Now, with Deadpool 2, a ridiculous action comedy, Zossie's work is completely different from a lot of the subtle, dramatic performances we've seen her do, which is actually perfect. When an actor has spent a great deal of their career mostly doing one thing really well, it's always great to see them figuratively and literally kick ass doing the complete opposite.